Hi guys, welcome to our Gigabyte P34G V2 underclock and undervolt video. In this video, we're going to be showing you guys how to underclock and undervolt the processor. That is the Core i7-4700HQ. In addition, this tutorial is also applicable to pretty much any other laptop out there with a really powerful processor and a fairly thin chassis. Essentially, this will lower your temperatures by quite a bit, and in turn will actually give you a bit more battery power due to the undervolt, but it's not really that significant. So to start off, we're going to go ahead and get Intel XTU. So we're going to open up our browser, and I want you guys to search for Intel XTU 5.1.0.23. Now, the reason we're using this version is just because I've heard people having problems with other versions and just them not being compatible or just in general having issues. So once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and click the executable, accept the terms, keep the download, and go ahead and open it, set it up, install it, all that good stuff. Once you've done all that, you're going to go ahead and open up the program. Now this program is very nice, the monitoring in it is very nice as well. In fact, I used to use hardware monitor, but since this program, I have not touched hardware monitor. Now, I'll give you guys a quick rundown of this program. So you can see here, uh, up here on the top left, we have the main window. Now here's where you're going to make all your modifications. On the bottom row here, you'll find all your monitoring tools. Now the nice thing for monitoring is you can actually select what you want to actually show in the graph. And if you hover over something, it'll give you the minimum, the maximum, and very handy one, the average. You can also change the time frame you want to see it. So you can see it in 3 minutes, 10 minutes, 1 minute, and so on. I also uh, will show you guys how to make my setup here because I just think it's a really nice setup where it just shows you all the information I think you'd want. So you can go ahead and click this wrench here and this is what I have checked off with the corresponding colors as well as these two and finally the graphics temperature in red. So before we actually get into underclocking and undervolting we're going to take a look at why we're actually doing this. So let's take a look at the temperatures right now with the stock settings. So I'm going to go ahead and it actually has a built-in stress tester which works fairly well. And we're going to let that run for 5 minutes. And we're going to see exactly what temperature we get. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll let it run for 5 minutes. Alright guys, so that concludes our test uh, for the temperatures when we're at stock settings. So as you can see from this graph here, this is pretty much a disaster. Uh, thermal lymph throttling actually went up as high as 48%, and that's uh, represented by this yellow line here. So it's because of this uh, settings, it's just getting throttled like crazy. Processor uh, frequency, you can see it's also uh, not smooth at all. It's always jumping from different frequencies as it's getting throttled. And temperatures are pretty much a nightmare. They range anywhere from 89 to 91. So we'll call about a 90 average for the processor temperatures. So this is what it would look like with uh, stock settings. Now we're going to go ahead and give this laptop a chance to cool down. And we're going to actually run the fans on turbo for a second, just while it cools down. And we're going to go ahead and do the undervolt and underclock. So the way you guys are going to do that is you're going to head up over to manual tuning. And we have our settings here. Now, what first thing we want to do is the underclock. So you see here you have one active core, two active cores, and so on. This is basically the frequency at each stage of the processor usage. So when there's only one active core, for example, that's when, for example, I don't know, browsing internet or just doing something that's not really... Uh, processor intensive, then it's just going to run at 3.4 gigahertz. And uh, when it's two active cores, so just kind of a medium load watching a movie or something, it's going to run at 3.3 gigahertz. So that we're not going to touch because then it's not really under load. We can run at a high frequency because the temperature isn't a problem because it's not at a high load. However, when we're playing Battlefield or gaming or anything processor intensive, then uh, three or four active cores is uh, true. And therefore, it's going to run at 3.2 gigahertz. Well, we don't really want that because that is really, really hot. So let's turn it down about 2.7. You can go lower, but this is a kind of a nice sweet spot I found for uh, stability. So you can see now that I've changed it actually, they're both uh, yellow now. And in this uh, column here, they're also yellow, showing you the change you're making. So Intel's really nice at uh, showing you exactly what you're doing. Next, we're going to go ahead and do the undervolt. 
So for that, we're just going to click the voltage and make sure you don't go to plus 60. That would be very bad. We're going to go to minus 60. Now, 60 is a pretty good number. I think um, pretty much anyone is going to be able to do that without any stability issues. Now, the idea is once you get a stable uh, voltage, for example, 60, you want to keep lowering it to, say, minus 65 and then minus 70. The idea is you want to get as low of a temperature or as low as a voltage as you possibly can while it's still being stable. But for this demonstration purpose, we're just going to stick with a minus 60. And once you've done that, you can see now the proposed changes. We're subtracting 60 millivolts and we're also reducing the 3 and 4 active core frequency. So we're going to go ahead and hit apply. And now you see that they turn blue because these are now our future settings. So now pretty much anytime you boot the computer, it'll run with these uh, settings unless you change it. So uh, now that the processor is cooled down and the whole computer, I think, has cooled down quite a bit, let's uh, run the stress test again. And hopefully we will see uh, quite an improvement in both uh, temperature and throttling. So we're going to go ahead and run that exact same thing for five minutes. All right, guys, so there's the thermal report on the test we just ran with our new underclocked and undervolted processor. As you can see, there's an absolutely huge difference between the two. Thermal throttling stayed at zero the whole time. And the frequency as well is a flat line, which is absolutely perfect. That's exactly what you want for frequency. As for temperature, we averaged at about 75 degrees, which is a whole 15 degrees lower than the temperature we had before. In addition to this, the fans are actually running a lot slower than before. So actually, if the uh, fans are running at the exact same speed, it would probably be down about 70 degrees. So if you're keeping all factors the same except underclock and undervolt, this is probably about a 20 degree difference, which is absolutely huge. So I definitely recommend uh, doing this to your laptop, guys. It's definitely something worthwhile. It won't decrease your performance in game just because games, they really care about graphics processor, not as much as the processor. So you won't see any noticeable differences other than the much, much lower processor uh, temperatures. I'll show you guys a quick comparison. I'll make my time frame though, 10 of the difference between these two. So on the left here, you can see what it was before. And on the right, you can see what it is after the undervolt. If I make it half an hour, there we go. Now you can see it even more so. So huge difference between this window here with the stock and this window here with the now undervolted, underclocked uh, processor. So I think this concludes this video, guys. If you like this video, give it a like if it helped out. If you dislike it, give it a dislike and let me know what I can improve on in the comments. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and I'll be posting more videos with this laptop and processor and graphics processor combo. So let me know what you guys want and I'll try and uh, get it done. So again, thanks for watching.